accessibility, the user interface. In this lesson, I'm going to give you a tour of the main window of MuseScore, and I'm going to be using my keyboard and screen reader so that you can see how to move about and find all the various different panels and toolbars and other controls that exist here. Now, right now, I am in the main score window. I've been, uh, I've created a score, I've added notes, I've added markings, and I'm still in the main score. And what I want to do is take a step back and look at the rest of the window. Now, in some programs, you might use tab to move through all the different controls, and then uh, you go through a complete circuit. But MuseScore has so many controls that we have implemented a hierarchical uh, organization to these controls. So instead of tab just giving you a complete circuit of all the controls, instead we're going to have F6 that moves through kind of the major areas of the window. And then within each major area, tab will move through controls in that area, but the tabs, they might be groupings of controls. So tab will move you to a grouping of controls, and then within that grouping, you may be using the cursor keys to select the individual controls. So F6 is going to kind of quickly move you through the main areas, tab is going to move you through groupings within a main area, and then cursor keys are going to move you through individual controls. So it can be a little bit uh, confusing. You might have to use a little trial and error, but I'm going to give you a guided tour here so that you can tell where everything is. As I mentioned, we're starting off in the score window. What I want to do is use F6 to visit all the different main kind of areas of the program, and then we'll return to each one in turn and explore their contents. So if I press F6 right now, Workspace, default button, I'm on the the, works, the uh, workspace button, but this button is located in what's called the status bar. And this is just a display at the bottom of the screen that has a number of different controls. So this is the status bar that we're in. I'm going to skip over the rest of the controls here and move to the next main area of the program by pressing F6 again. Main toolbar direction is horizontal panel, home radio button not checked. So now we are on the main toolbar. And uh, this contains a number of controls that we'll come back to also, but let's move on by pressing F6 again. Note input toolbar panel, default, step time, button note. Yeah, I'm just going to even just uh, cut, off, uh, cut off Mr. NVDA there. Um, we're on the note input toolbar here. And so this has a number of commands uh, that we could use for entering notes into our score. They all have keyboard shortcuts so that for the most part you're probably not going to be using the tool this toolbar very often because everything on it has a keyboard shortcut. Uh, let's press F6 to move on. Palettes radio button checked. So this is saying that we're on the palettes which is true. The palettes is actually located within an area called the left sidebar. So there's actually other tabs here. There's instruments and properties. We're going to come back there in a minute. So this is the left sidebar where we're at. Let me press F6 again. My song not saved radio button checked. So it's calling it a radio button because there's actually individual tabs here for if I have a score that has multiple parts, there's going to be tabs for each individual part. Uh, but right now, basically, we have returned to the score. My song is the name of my score. If I press F6 again, workspace, default button. All right, now I'm back down to the status bar. So since I'm at the status bar, we might as well start the rest of our tour here now. I want to explore the contents of this status bar. So I mentioned that within these areas, tab will move you to different groupings. Well, let me try to press tab right now. Main toolbar direction is horizontal panel. Home radio button not checked. So notice that it took me right out of the status bar and took me to the main toolbar. That's because there's not multiple groupings in the status bar. There's only one grouping. So let me press shift tab to get back to the status bar. Workspace, default button. And now I'm going to use the cursor keys to move through the different, there are several controls within the status bar. So let me use the cursor keys. Concert pitch checkbox checked. 
So I hit right and it took me to the concert pitch button. Hit right again. Page view button. And that's a page view button. This allows you to switch between a page view of your score and a continuous view of your score, which is like a long horizontal strip as opposed to a physical representation of the page. We hit right again. Zoom in button. The zoom in button could be useful for people with low vision. If you press space now to activate space. it, it zooms in. Space. Space zooms in more. So you can zoom in on your score. And now let me press right again. Zoom out button. There's a zoom out button. Let me press right again. 200 edit blank. And so this is just showing me the current zoom level and allowing me to choose other zoom levels. If I press right again, blank. Nothing really happens because I'm kind of within that. Uh, it's like a, I guess it's a. It is actually a drop-down list to be honest, because you can select particular zoom levels from it. I'm going to press then uh, tab to get me out of this whole area. And that took me out of the uh, the uh, control for the zoom level. Now I guess I can press tab again, and hopefully this time it's going to take me out of the whole status bar. Main toolbar direction is horizontal panel. Home radio button not checked. All right, so now we're on the main toolbar. The main toolbar contains three different groupings, so we are going to use a combination of tab and cursor keys here. So the first grouping are the three tabs that exist in MuseScore Home, Score, and Publish. So you heard it read Home, not Selected. That's because we're not on the Home tab. Um, the Home tab is where you start off when you first open MuseScore, and there's where there's icons representing recently opened scores, there's a button to open a new score, etc. But normally after that, you wouldn't necessarily ever need to return to that Home tab. So I'm not going to explore it any further. I'm going to press Right, Score radio button checked. So this is telling me we're on the score tab. So uh, everything else, everything that we've been doing is here on the score tab. Let me hit right again. Publish radio button not checked. So there is a publish tab as well. The publish tab is a, is a little bare at the moment. It really is just has a few commands to do things like publish to musescore.com and export to other formats. But those commands are also available in the menus. And so we're not really going to need the publish tab for anything in particular. If I hit right arrow again, home radio button not checked. I'm back to the beginning of that grouping of three tabs, right? So I'm done with that grouping. So next I want to press, press tab to move to the next grouping within this main toolbar. Notation toolbar panel, parts button parts. So this is called, as you heard it say, no, notation toolbar panel. And uh, there's a parts button here. And this is what will allow us to generate individual parts from our score. Like my score is for flute, trumpet, and trombone, and then they're all showing together. But the parts dialog is what's going to allow me to generate individual flute part, individual trumpet part, individual trombone part for printing. So that's one of the controls in this grouping. If I press the right arrow, mixer button show slash hide mixer. So this is a button to display the mixer, which can be used to change you know sound levels. If I press right button again. Parts button parts. Uh, that's all there is. So there's just these two controls on this particular grouping. So we press tab to move to the next grouping within the main toolbar. Playback toolbar panel. Rewind button rewind. So this is the playback toolbar. And it has a number of controls that you might expect. And we, uh, so that was the rewind button. If I press the right arrow. Play button play. So there's a play button. Right arrow again. Loop playback button toggle loop playback. There's a button to control looping of playback and all the different controls that we're going to talk that we're looking at here there's all individual lessons that you we, we can look into each of these controls in other lessons let me hit right again metronome button toggle metronome playback and again playback settings button so there's some settings that we can access here if i hit right again rewind button rewind i'm done with that grouping so that is it for uh, actually, if I press tab again, undo, redo toolbar panel, undo button, undo. So there is an undo and a redo button here. Remember, these always have keyboard shortcuts, control or command Z, and shift control command or Z to, uh, un to undo and redo. If I press tab again now, note input toolbar panel, default, 
step time, button note input, toggle default, step time, mode. So tab, once you're finished going through all the groupings within uh, one of these main things, it takes you to the next main thing. So it took me from, after I finished tabbing through the main toolbar, it took me to the note input toolbar. And the note input toolbar, I'm not even going to go through, I'll, I'll just quickly go through all the different thing, all the different buttons here. Again, they pretty much all have shortcuts. So if I that was a button to enable note input mode, if I press right, 64th note. 32nd, 16th, 8th note, quarter note, half note, whole note, augmentation dot, rest button, toggle double flat, toggle flat, toggle natural, toggle sharp, toggle double sharp, tie button, at, slur button, at, marcato button, accent button, tenuto button, staccato button, tuplet button, flip direction button, voice 1 button, voice 2 button, add button, customize toolbar button, show slash hide toolbar buttons. So that was a really quick tour of the buttons on the node input toolbar. So next, let me hit tab to move on to the next grouping. Palettes radio button checked. So now we are in the left sidebar. There was there, were, there weren't other additional groupings within the node input toolbar. So tab just took me to the next area, which is the left sidebar. And so it, we're on the palettes right now. Um, if I then uh, hit the uh, right arrow here to move to the other, because that was a radio button, it said. So if I hit, uh, actually I can hit down arrow also. Menu button. There's a menu, uh, there's like a dot, dot, dot menu on that palettes tab, but we're still within the uh, radio button for palettes. Let me hit down again. Instruments radio button not checked. So this is the instruments tab. If I press space now. Space. This activates the instruments tab. There are three different tabs within this left sidebar. So you can either be on the palettes tab or the instruments tab. If I hit down. Menu button. Again, there's a dot, dot, dot menu. Hit down again. Properties radio button not checked. So there's also a properties panel. And if I press space, space. it will activate the properties panel. And you know, in other lessons, we can explore the contents of each of these panels. So um, if I press tab right now, actually, general panel, general not selected, it's, it, I have now entered the properties panel. And tab again, note panel, note not selected, I'm moving to the next grouping within the properties panel. So uh, there's a number of groupings here, and the contents of the properties panel depends on what's actually selected in the score. So rather than tab through all of this, let me press F6 to return to our score. My song not saved radio button checked. And that pretty much completes the tour of the main uh, window with one <laughs> exception. This exception is going to be a little bit different depending on whether you're on uh, Windows, Linux, or Mac. But I want to press Alt to get to the menu area and just walk through the menus. Application menu panel file button. So the organization of the menu is different on Mac than other systems. I'm on Windows right now. So there's a file menu. Let me hit right. Edit button. Edit. View button. View. Add button. Add. Format button. So file, edit, view, and add. Their shortcuts, their direct shortcuts are Alt-F, Alt-E, Alt-V, and Alt-A. For format, it's going to be Alt-O because F is already taken for file. Let me hit right. Tools button. That's going to be Alt-T. Plugins button. That's Alt-P. Help button. That's Alt-H. Diagnostic button. And that's Alt-D. So, uh, and the contents of the menus, you know, we'll go through as we go through other lessons. We'll look at the contents of these menus, but I wanted to show you how you can access all of these different uh, things. So we have now looked at pretty much all the controls on the main window, and you've seen how you can get around using F6, Tab, and the cursor keys.